Welcome to our cryptocurrency special for Sacred Self Healing members, the beginners how to's and not to's. Um, I want to make a quick remark. Uh, we uh, lost the beginning half of the recording and luckily Roger recorded this, uh, this video for us. So the first half, uh, the audio quality is not as good as the second half. I apologize for that, but nonetheless, uh, enjoy this uh, filled, uh, information filled webinar and uh, all the information in there. It's long, I know, but this is what it takes right now to get an overview. So just play it in the background while you're working on something else or, uh, you know, listen to it while you're driving. Um, just to get the gist of it, all right? Um, I thank you all for coming and I hope uh, that it empowers you to see the connection between abundance as an energetic resonance and money. Thank you. Have fun. Into our self-mastery journey and then um, give you lots of practical tips, all right? So stay tuned here. Uh, we have a big... Uh, um, a schedule um, and uh, as always I do want to encourage you to ask questions at any time and you can do this either through the chat functions when you when you text me please keep the questions concise because I have to read while I'm talking and uh, you are welcome to speak into the microphone at any point in time what will we cover um, first, uh, we're going to do an overview, then uh, we're going to talk about what are accounts and wallets, what does this even mean, um, uh, then we're going to need to talk about security tips and um, uh, what is entailed in, in buying and moving cryptocurrencies. Um, then um, I'm going to quickly show you how to track um, or at least explain how you can track any kind of uh, crypto transaction, how you can store uh, your cryptocurrencies, uh, very briefly about taxation, um, uh, then how to spend your crypto money, uh, which is the, the practical uh, part why we're doing this, and uh, then um, trading and or investing, we're going to cover the basics of those, uh, and I'm going to help you to just at least in sort of theoretically develop um, investment strategies and, and what a portfolio could look like for 2018. And uh, then we're going to cover the best practices and, and how to deal with a crypto ADHD, as I call it, and the, the hype that it can be quite uh, contagious. Uh, if you start to actually dive into this, you'll be uh, uh, bombarded um, energetically with uh, a lot of different aspects that I want to cover here as well. And um, uh, towards the end, we're going to be just talking about the future a little bit and what this market can bring for us as collective all together. And then uh, last but not least, we're going to talk about some practical tips. So I'm going to go through how to open an account and some steps. Uh, for you and I hope we'll be able to cover all of this in an hour most likely not <laughs> so please stay um, patient if you have to go anywhere you know it's no problem you don't need to let me know if you have to leave there's going to be an, uh, a recording that you will be able to you know to, to just play while you're doing other things so before we get started first of all is there or do you have any burning questions that you feel need to be covered here before I get started? Oh, I do. It's how to stay sane while doing this. Okay. <laughs> and yesterday, it's all about the I am breathing. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Cheryl, for bringing this in. This is uh, something that we need to cover because it has to do with our personal journey. Okay, and that is when we decide to enter this market, we are diving into something that can be hazardous <laughs> energetically. Okay, so I want to point this out, and uh, and you could already tell by Cheryl's commentary here 
uh, there are some problems <laughs> energetically, okay? And we will cover them and please remind me uh, always to, to cover this because, you know, I have this uh, thing in my mind that I want to educate you on certain things and I can get sidetracked, you know, in technical things sometimes. Um, right, so yes, one of the questions here will um, that are coming in through the chat you know how to invest in, in specific tokens all right we will cover this uh, not all the way through this would take like five hours um, and I don't have all the answers uh, as well this is important to understand so uh, really this is a round here um, of, of people and it's a closed round there's no people from the outside it's only for sacred self healing members as to uh, sort of what uh, how to approach all that uh, it's not all the answers and I will also to talk about why uh, then I would love to hear from you guys at this point and we, we're going to use the, uh, the, the the raise your hand question um, for uh, polls that I do with you who of you muted already invested or let, let me ask you this who of you is already in the crypto world in thought in theory by educating themselves uh, reading stuff or even investing like all together who of you is already in this world okay <laughs> all right this is sorry like um roughly 20 percent okay okay cool awesome uh, and that means that we will hopefully have uh, quite a few people here uh, who can share okay because I really want you guys to to, to see the uh, you know the healing aspect of you sharing uh, some of your uh, uh, experiences and some of your uh, you know frustrations and so forth because this is very important for people to hear okay so just so you know, there is a lot of aspects here from an energetic standpoint that uh, can be problematic with the cryptos. And I'll also explain why. So thank you guys. And uh, those who raised their hand, um, please feel uh, uh, free to, to, to comment at any point, all right? If, if there's an experience that you've made or uh, uh, that... Uh, um, we haven't made um you know or corrections as well so i'm not um uh, pretending to have all the answers okay i i'm uh it's cheryl and i am uh i've jumped in with both feet in a number of different ways and have learned a whole lot about my impatience and my intolerance levels and so uh, I, and I also have a big fear of losing money and, and so this has brought up a lot of memories from an energetic perspective and what I want to tell everybody is so far I haven't lost any money I've just misplaced it in different places so um, it's, my fear is entertained and so far it's all just been stories in my head so for me that's a big lesson Okay, so Cheryl, I, I've asked Cheryl um, and uh, Cindy and Margie, um, whom I knew that uh, that are already navigating in the in the crypto market, to, to be here as, as as panel guests almost. Okay, Cheryl, I, I really really appreciate this comment. Okay, so what you've experienced is a lot of ups and downs and mental looping and emotional looping and all that. But you have not lost any money. Now, no, just just a fair amount of sanity and tears. <laughs> okay. But let me ask you. In, in, let me ask you another thing. Have you made money so far? Oh, Is there yes. Positives. Yes. Oh, totally. Yeah, yeah. I, I. But I also have the luxury of time. So, and because I have spent a lot of time and wasted a lot of time trying to figure it out, but there is no like it's like going to university or going to school. You still have to put the time in and just click on the button like you're going to an ATM machine and expect money to pop out. There's actually a, not only a, um, a monetary investment, but there's a time investment in the education. And, and because my 
frustration level is is exponentially developing as fast as my time invested. I, it, I'm not at a I'm not at a level out spot because the learning curve is really high. And as you said, there are no experts in this because this is all new. This is new territory for everyone. It's like forging through a field with a machete for the very first time. And it, and I, I guess I'm just really used to having people tell me how to do you go to the bank and make a deposit, you pull your money out, you do this, you pay a mortgage, you do that. This isn't that. So that that is probably a, a big challenge for me too, the fear of losing money and the fear of not being smart enough. Those two things put together just have really um, come forefront in this. And I, I just want to tell anybody that's interested in doing this adventure, just be prepared for that because that is normal. That that you're not crazy, you're not stupid, you're not going to lose your money. Well, hopefully not. You're going to make money because I certainly have. But it's normal to have all of those emotions riding really high. I, and I really want to stress that because I really felt alone in that journey. And and. Uh, you warned me it was the Wild West, but I didn't really get what you were saying. Okay. Yes. That's, that's, that's my advice to anybody, is just be prepared to have all of those emotional things. It's normal. And Cheryl, can I you want to... The... Hello? Oh, sorry, you know, no, I didn't mean to interrupt you. I just wanted to pop in with a question. Yeah? What, because what Cheryl said is kind of what I anticipate is the reality here. Is it practical for somebody like myself who doesn't have the luxury of, of all that much time and is a little tech, um, I mean, I, I'm not a, I'm not terrified in the tech world, but you know, it, it makes me, I can easily feel overwhelmed. Uh -huh. And so is it reasonable that I could like get a wallet, get some bitcoins, hodl, and and just from there sort of like continue to educate myself gradually without being too stressed out. And that and, and Deb, thank you for, for for asking this because this is probably where most of us will end up. You know, because of the, this aspect of time that Cheryl brought in, and I know how much time Cheryl has spent, and I know how much time I'm spending in this world. Since the beginning of this year, I'm spending roughly two or three hours a day. Besides already coaching and doing all the other stuff uh, uh, in the crypto world. So for those of us who don't have that time, uh, we're going to discuss different um, strategies here towards the end you know like uh, overcoming fears and facing some of that is the first aspect that we're going to address you know the courage to just you know really face it okay but then we're going to have to develop a strategy that works for us you know what works for me it is wild west as of right now and this is probably the most volatile tile time in cryptocurrencies right now here December 10th okay because there it hasn't even started yet all right and so it is advisable and this will you will always hear me say this to not you know go in and drop everything in your life and and try to become a millionaire with cryptos you can become a millionaire with cryptos all right but that doesn't mean that this is the most beneficial or conducive thing for you to do. And I agree with you, uh, you know, there, there are many of us who will just need to, you know, sort of get a foot in, you know, do the safest route, and we're going to explore those different routes together. Thank you, Deb, for bringing this up. Okay, so, yeah, if you get a little uneasy right now, that's all right, <laughs> you know, because I really need uh, you to feel... Uh, the uh, the stress in that there is a lot of stress in that and not because uh, uh, you know it's so the technological aspect is one big aspect but it's not the main aspect the main aspect is what Cheryl mentioned and that is that it triggers all our fears and it will trigger different fears in different people 
okay there's people like Cheryl and I who have this uh, is sort of want to be part of, of, of something new you know pioneer type of spirit and the biggest fear for us and I'm Cheryl I'm, I'm saying us here because I could so hear you know everything that I thought in you you know when you shared with me you know uh, your journey here the last three months uh, is to lose out on something oh my god what if I missed the train what if this is all happening without me okay this was uh, like our fear but then there will be people who will have uh, uh, you know and, and uh, of course we all do have different layers of fears but then there's of course the fear of loss you know so the fear of actually losing money but then there's also the fear of like uh, signing up for something a scam or something like being like stupid like you said you know like just uh, sort of being taken advantage of and all that so uh, those of us who have victim attachments you know they will feel uh, those come up big time well and something I wanted to add at, at the at the front of this conversation Yona and we've talked about this at length because I've, 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 I've made a wrong turn in the road with this as well but this entire movement is about integrity it's about the decentralization of well control of all also but this is mostly on a financial basis but a, a control of, of, of systems that are no longer applicable to to this to the I'll call it enlightenment of, of the people so they're there as you taught me to look for the integrous people and to feel things out and to actually use the use the teachings that we're learning through the sacred self healing about where, who do I want to be in the world and, and, and what kind of um, organizations or groups do I want to affiliate myself with and that's the whole point of this and I think that that has that also been part of my learning curve with this too because if that's really what this is all about I'm going to go through fear because I'm going to go through every emotion as I get to my true self and this whole thing is about being true so there's, like you said, energetically, there's way more at work here than anyone would ever think of. And you can see that if you hook into people's YouTube stuff or whatever, you see every, you see really integrous people, and you see people that look like lizards climbing through the screen. It's quite a ride, but like you told me right from the, from the onset, ride high, like take, take the high road, never, ever stoop just to make some quick money or whatever do what the whole thing is in, in, in designed to do in the first place and that is to decentralize and put the power back in truth that's my lecture <laughs> and, and Cheryl has brought up a very important part here and that is the spirit of, of, of the cryptocurrencies all right and um, and why integrity plays a role here the main movement behind cryptocurrencies guys is to have a choice it is not a guarantee you know that you um, uh, uh, just because you you're in the crypto world doesn't mean that you're automatically more integrous oh no no <laughs> there's a lot of non integrous stuff going on in the crypto world obviously because what does it trigger in people greed it triggers third chakra Okay, so we have uh, a lot of, of non integral stuff going on and the only way to navigate through this safely is to apply everything that you're learning here and that is to go into your heart and really, you know, discern between, of course, your lower vibratory stuff that will come up and your higher vibratory understanding of things and your alignment, okay? And that's something that I cannot teach you other than uh, through, you know, everything else that I do. But here is a practical application of that. And so let's move forward here. Uh, and this is a very good a bridge to the, the spirit of the crypto world. Why it was originally invented. Okay, and there are uh, some uh, speculations that it's actually uh, the, uh, the powers to be, if you will, that have uh, injected uh, Bitcoin and the and the software protocol that comes with Bitcoin, which is the uh, decentralized idea of transactions that uh, uh, Cheryl just mentioned. Decentralized means in the hands of everybody. 
Okay, it's sort of like comparable with communism versus capitalism. Okay, uh, without the political aspect of it, it's a technological aspect, and that is the the the, the original spirit of of uh, internet, which was that um, information is accessible for everybody, which we now have. We have that situation more or less. That, that information is accessible for everybody. This was not the case 30 years ago, guys. There was no such thing as Wikipedia or whatever you think of these um, uh, uh, institutions that that uh, present the information, you know, or Google. There was no such thing. You had to go in the library and, and, and either, you know, uh, lend a book or, or buy a book. All right? Uh, buy a book. Uh, so... You know, this is a, a, a revolution in itself, and here we are now at the at the cusp of a new revolution, and that is the actual transactions within the internet. The transactions, like from one computer to another, and the idea behind the crypto world is the peer-to-peer -peer transaction, which means that anybody can transact or can transfer something from from my computer to your computer without a middleman so the whole vibrational context here of the crypto world is to bring the power back into the hands of the people so the vibrational context is that there is a movement in uh, within the the, the the digital world that we already have uh, to free up uh, the ability to transfer anything from anywhere to anywhere directly without a middleman and that is something that it has maybe never really crossed your mind how this has been controlled in the past how is that as of today when you do a transaction and I'm, I'm, and we, let's let's focus on financial transactions here because that's where of course the the, the, the power the consumer power and all that lies when you make a transaction to somebody, even if you send it through your phone, how does this go today? It goes from from your bank account, which an institution holds, all right, all your data, all your money is held by your bank or PayPal, right? You don't own it. They do. You just have the access rights to it. Okay, and you send it to somebody else through another institution. And then it ends up in the institution of the other person's, you know, the, the recipient's account. So there's like three middlemen. And sometimes it's all just, you know, within one institution, but there's three steps. And all these institutions, they keep your money for a certain amount of time and work it and make money with it. Yes, you have um, I, I, did, I did a wire transfer um, like three weeks ago and I went to the bank and the, the banker was actually surprised because the transaction was going through three different banks <laughs> and, it, and it took like 24 like 20 hours. hours. To transfer. How much did you Hang on, Gosha, we can't hear you. The microphone is, uh, is maybe caught in your hair or something. Yeah, my, can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah, so the transaction itself was about uh, $90 or something. Just to do the wire transfer. Okay. So this is the, the this is the visible part for us, okay? This is the, the we have to pay the middleman, okay? And it probably took two or three days, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. There's parts in the world, you know, like the second and third world countries, where the fees are even higher and where the transaction can take up to six days, sometimes even forty days, all right? Because your money is being held within these middlemen institutions and they use it to invest into things okay and they make money with it this is sort of the big injustice here in the financial system 
is that the institutions that we trust our money to, they're making money, they're holding our money and working our money. They're also providing services for us, such as lending money to us, okay? But they do this again with other people's monies. So we need to understand that the, 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 this, this whole sort of idea behind cryptocurrencies is to cut out the middleman. And that's why there's this higher vibratory uh, uh, aspect to it, to it, uh, which is uh, something that I have uh, put into context here for you within this vibrational scale. You know, the current financial paradigm is based on a lower vibratory concept, namely keeping things for myself, you know, um, holding things and self-gain. The crypto world is based on, on, on truth. It's based on um, uh, allowing things to be open and visible for everybody. And it's not the end of everything because there is, of course, a, a, a paradigm that is much higher in vibratory rate and that would be uh, a world say where we didn't need money altogether where we would just share resources and where everything would be based on self-sustaining concepts but we're not there yet okay so the crypto world is the transition and this is what we've all been waiting for now how this is all going to play out in the future we're going to discuss this later there are several aspects to that that we will experience life. So to be alive here in this development right now and to witness all of this is awesome. And to be here, to be talking about cryptocurrencies at this stage here, you have to understand this, is at the very birth of it. At the very birth of it. It's only people who were in the software industry who could see this coming earlier. Let me ask you a question. How many of you have been offered Bitcoin six, seven, eight, three, four years ago and thought, oh, whatever, or didn't understand it, or thought it was a scam or whatever? Some people. I actually, yes. I actually was offered, and uh, I, I thought, I mean, I... For me, it was like, what, like, crypto, like, internet money, what? <laughs> but no, I didn't invest. <laughs> yeah, so, there's a few here, like myself, who have been offered, and they gave away Bitcoins for free. <laughs> I remember this. <laughs> okay, so, yeah, uh, that for that. And who of you, uh, upon hearing about Bitcoin or this whole crypto thing, is thinking... Oh, this is like one of those things, you know, it's not safe, you know, it's uh, it's all just, you know, like, um, I can't trust this. Who of you is distrusting of the crypto world? For whatever reason. Okay, nobody so far. That's pretty cool. Okay, obviously you guys have been informing yourself <laughs> already a little bit. <laughs> So that's that's cool. It's really cool that you guys are not uh, distrusting, um, you know, because uh, uh, at the end of the day, uh, and uh, some of you have had teachers in the past who have already uh, pointed your attention at this. At the end of the day, uh, the, the, the way the system is right now, with us, you know, having our money on bank accounts and um, making transactions through our debit cards, uh, that is actually the much unsafer system. Why is that? Because we are not in control of it at all. I mean, how many times has this happened to people that their bank accounts were closed from one day to another without a reason or their credit cards were uh, frozen or whatever? I mean, you're not in control of your money. If you think you are, you are in, in, in an illusion. You're not. And that is what's behind the blockchain technology, which is the technology that Bitcoin and all other cryptocurrencies are based upon. Okay, and um, not, not to go too deep into this because I've already uh, done a, a video on that, but um, the blockchain is a, pro a software protocol that is run on computers 
uh, throughout the world any you know this could be any computer could be yours if you if you decide to to make your computer available for that network uh, that runs the software protocol that basically keeps all the transaction data holographically so that's another thing to understand here for you guys as energetically sensitive and, uh, and and educated people in energy work that is uh, the the similarities here uh, in regards to the holographic nature of the blockchain technology which means that all data of all transactions is kept in every computer and that makes it transparent that makes it open and that makes it a system that uh, can be used for these higher vibrational um, uh, aspects that we talked about namely trust all right so if there is a world where you could at any point in time track where your money is at okay then there is no possibility to use your money uh, for other reasons than the one purpose that you assign to it which means it gives you back the power over your own money so that's uh, 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 so much for the for for the essence here the, the spiritual uh, uh, aspect of it the technical aspect of this is and and now we get more into like understanding what these uh, different cryptocurrencies are about is that the the blockchain can be used for many different things of course it can be used for storing value okay this is what you see on the screen here in form of currency such as bitcoin all right so that would be um, uh, sort of the alternative use for for uh, uh, money, uh, not in 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 your in your uh, national currency, but in form of a digital currency, and uh, you have the ownership of it, and you know it's something that you can use to pay for things, and it's something that you can use to to um, you know to to move value. To store and to move value—that is the most common uh, uh, use for this technology, and this is uh, <clears throat> explaining why so many talk about Bitcoin because that's the original uh, purpose of Bitcoin. It can also um, uh, per- it can also serve the purpose of exchanging value. This is something that, if you think about it, how this works in the financial world right now. Uh, is not that easy if you wanted to trade a currency like say you know you go travel in a different country and you have to buy the, the, the local currency you have to go through these exchange booths or you have to go to a bank and they charge hefty fees for that all the way up to like three or seven percent so exchanging value as of today always required a middleman and was very expensive this is now different you can ex- with digital currencies you can exchange you know the value of of one token to another token from one currency to another currency by just doing it you may have to uh, pay a, a small fee like tiny fee you know such as pennies for that just to run the the uh, the infrastructure you know the software but that's about it um, somebody saying lost audio. Can you all hear me? Okay, everybody else can hear me, Amanda. Sorry, hon. Uh, 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 wiggle on your on your on your uh, on your cables, maybe a little bit. Okay. So the next uh, uh, purpose for the blockchain technology is the ability. And this is something that is extremely uh, interesting for our future to store permanent records. And uh, we're, we're, we're now entering here uh, uh, one of the, uh, in, in my view, a most interesting future uses of the blockchain technology that has nothing to do with money per se, but with the, the data storage altogether, registries, identities. You know, ownership of land, for instance, 
those are all things that can be stored on the blockchain because remember it's a holographic system they can't be deleted they they're not owned by anybody except for um, uh, the person who actually uh, uh, puts that data into the blockchain and then it can also and this is uh, uh, what explains these new technologies that are emerging that I have mentioned in other on other occasions before it can execute programs so-called smart contracts which means you can send out a, um, a, a software agent to do things for you you know to like say um, you guys are all familiar with these sites like say uh, for finding cheap flights right where you type in the the departing airport and then the, the, the arriving airport and then these uh, software platforms find the cheapest flights for you this would be one of the first applications in uh, blockchain uh, uh, software smart contracts to search the entire blockchain for the best solution for whatever it is that you're using or, or whatever it is that you're looking for and uh, some of these emerging technologies are landing platforms of course you know because that's uh, some of the, the the most logical things so, you know since people have so much stored value on the blockchain is to go in and offer uh, uh, loans and mortgages that use for instance that use your cryptocurrency accounts as collaterals where you don't have to go through a mortgage company anymore you're sending out this this little program that says i'm looking for a loan for so and so much money or money value because i want to buy a house and i have uh, uh, this uh, amount of, uh, of 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 crypto value here and i have the house as collateral who's going to give me a loan and that's something that can be done through um, uh, this blockchain technology. And someone is asking here, what is the use of a token? It's ex exactly, basically what I just talked about. A token, and let's uh, switch my uh, view here to something that is more practical now. Uh, I'm gonna change my, uh, um, my view here in a second to the actual uh, cryptocurrency market overview okay but there are different kinds of cryptos all right there are the the currency coins that you know such as bitcoin they can function as security they can function as uh, you know as a form of alternative money because you can spend them also then there are the kind of tokens that are um, merely software protocols such as ethereum and uh, they have a huge meaning for the blockchain technology because uh, they can uh, they provide software tools for software programmers okay in other words they pro provide vehicles and track systems and then there are tokens that um have a use uh, uh, as tokens meaning um i compared this uh, with the chuck e cheese tokens all right so you go uh, into uh, a certain uh, uh, company infrastructure uh, uh, and you buy tokens from them and they allow you to use those tokens and to pay for services this could be compared to like say frequent flyer miles okay so let's uh, uh, assume you have uh, frequent flyer miles somewhere and this uh, we will see this next year a hundred percent where um, you know every time you book a flight you get a token and then you can use this token to buy duty free or to buy food on the plane or uh, uh, turn the token into um, uh, use it to to pay for uh, future flights so uh, the the token use within a company's uh, infrastructure is uh, is very similar to loyalty programs and so forth where you buy a specific token from a specific company that provides you with specific services that you can pay um, uh, with uh, in form of tokens does everybody understand that that's very important to understand please ask do you understand the different uses of tokens
Okay, so most people say yes. Kind of. Okay. So, um, I, I personally like the, I, the 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 visualization of a of a casino token. You know, because that that's kind of like what it is. You know, you you go to the the, the to the desk, uh, the the checkout or check in desk. And you give them money, and they give you chips for it, and that's a token. And then you can go do something with it. All right, and that's how tokens work. Uh, the terminology is a little uh, misleading here sometimes because overall, all of these tokens, all of these protocols, all of these currencies together are called cryptocurrencies. So even if it's not a currency per se, it's summarized as the word cryptocurrency so when i talk about cryptocurrencies i talk about all these different types of uh, cryptos all right and that is up to uh the the uh <coughs> sorry up to the uh um you know the um Uh, research that you do so how can you discern you know between those different tokens and I will show you here now in the practical how to get an overview all right this is a website called coinmarketcap.com this is pretty much what all people who are navigating in the crypto world are using as a basic overview first and I'll help you to navigate this. Let's look at, for those of you who have never been in trading before, let me ask you something real quick. Who of you have traded stocks before? Can you raise your hand? It's just a few of you. Okay. Uh, that's important for me to know because if you've never traded stocks before, then you're generally not familiar with how to read charts and stuff like that okay so i'm gonna go all the way to the beginner level here for you okay very little it, yes um oh shit. i'm not i'm not recording oh good is anybody recording Welcome to the late recording of our cryptocurrency special questions and answers. <laughs> All right, guys, uh, you guys have been the only ones hearing this up until now. Thank you for letting me know. It's a bit frustrating, but nothing I can do about this. Okay, so we've just uh, switched the view here to the software that all uh, people who navigate in the crypto world use as uh, uh, as a sort of uh, landing page. Okay, here's where you get the overview over all cryptocurrencies that are out there. And we just discussed what cryptocurrencies are. We discussed uh, the, the the higher vibrational aspect of the crypto world. We also discussed the sanity aspects and the, the energetic issues with investing in the crypto world. And you've not missed um, a lot other than uh, some really cool sharings. Uh, and uh, some overview. Okay, so when you come to this website here, coinmarketcap.com, you'll see a bunch of numbers and you'll see a bunch of of names here on the left. Those are all different tokens slash cryptocurrencies. Okay, and I will show you how to navigate through those. First of all, I want you to uh, I want to uh, uh, draw your attention to this number up here can you see all can you all see this on the left upper hand cryptocurrencies 1339 this is to date the number of different cryptocurrencies that are out there this is probably surprising to most of you because most of us have only heard about um bitcoin Okay, so uh, there are 1,300 cryptocurrencies out there. And there are 7,237 markets on which those are being traded. Just to give you an overview, all right? 
I want you, whenever you log on to the site, pay attention to this just a little bit. But there's a number that's much more important, and that is the market capitalization. The, this is currently at $414 billion US dollars. At the beginning of 2017, when I first recommended you guys to pay attention to alternative currencies, the market capitalization was somewhere around, I think, 13 billion. So within 2017, the amount of money that is flowing into cryptocurrencies worldwide has increased by $400 billion. And this is steadily growing by the day. And I want you to pay attention to this number every time you log on to this because this will give you an indication of where the market is heading. There is currently a trillion dollars sitting on the sidelines just waiting to flow into cryptocurrencies by early um, and, and uh, fast adapting trading companies. The total value of uh, stock market trading in the world as of today is somewhere um, uh, between 18 and 19 trillion dollars. Do you guys understand what this means? It means that we are ha that we have not seen anything yet. And what you're going to see here, this number, you're going to see this number doubling and tripling within the next weeks, especially around the new year. You will feel like you on a fast moving train. Okay, which is part of the the, the sanity uh, problem that we mentioned earlier, um, because this will um, allow us uh, to see, you know, how things are going all together. The, the second line here is the 24 hour volume. This is just the number of, of uh, a volume that has been traded uh, in the last 24 hours. And just uh, so you know, those of you who used to do or still are doing stock market trading, the cryptocurrency a world does not sleep. So there's a 24 hour, 365 uh, 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 trading uh, uh, that is happening. The BTC dominance, this number that you see here, BTC is short for um, uh, Bitcoin. It's the, uh, the, uh, the abbreviation sign for Bitcoin, just like in the stock market. And the dominance shows you, you know, like as far as like the ratio uh, of money that is flowing into Bitcoin as compared to all other coins. This is also something that you can um, uh, keep an eye on. If you're not familiar with trading, this won't really tell you a lot, but um, it, it shows you how balanced the market is. Right now the market is not balanced because we just had a huge amount of influx into Bitcoin the last two weeks, the last week. So it's always been around 40, 50%. Right now it's at 62% because the majority of people out there like yourselves have heard about cryptocurrencies, but the only cryptocurrency they've heard about is Bitcoin. And as of right now, Bitcoin is the, the, the most predominant security in cryptocurrency, meaning it is a, a, a cryptocurrency that most people recognize by name, so that it has to do with branding, but it also has to do with, it seems like the safest investment, all right? Without having to know anything about these other 1,338 cryptocurrencies out there, okay? And this will continue, at least for the next two years, all right? When your grandma talks about cryptocurrencies, you know, in, in, in a couple of years from now, uh, then uh, this may go down, this number. But as for the next year, we're going to see a huge influx into Bitcoin because this is what most people uh, understand as a cryptocurrency. All right, whoops, this is uh, my schedule here. Sorry for that. Um, yes, yeah. so going further down and into like reading 
okay reading those things what does this mean okay first of all there's certain sorting um, parameters that you can uh, determine here and the first one is market capitalization which means that when you go onto this website it will automatically sort the cryptocurrencies by the market cap which means by the amount of money that flows into them so the ranking here is based on the market cap uh, uh, or the, the amount of money traded in those currencies which basically means you're seeing the most traded currencies in this first view okay you can change that um, to uh, showing you um, uh, just uh, specific coins or just specific tokens and here you can change your your uh, uh, sorting whoops Yes, I've just lost Litecoin. So you can change your sorting by clicking here on these different sorting aspects. So you can, for instance, click on change by 24 hours and see what the most um, changes uh, were in, in, in which currencies um, that the highest changes were. So let, if, you, if I click on this, the first time it will show me the cryptocurrencies that had the most gains over the last 24 hours. Okay. You don't see Bitcoin here. It's down here. And if you click it another time, it will show you the ones that lo lost the most over the last 24 hours. Okay. If you click at circulating supply, then uh, it, it will sort the uh, this uh, list here by uh, who has the most tokens out there the number of tokens and just so you understand every cryptocurrency has a finite amount of tokens out that's how they're being traded it is comparable with stocks but it is not the same as stocks tokens are not shares in the company tokens are the equivalent value of shares in the company but they do not represent, uh, uh, you know, uh, at least in most cases, uh, they do not represent equity in that company or in that currency. They represent, you know, uh, the value that is being traded. And the other thing is uh, uh, to understand that the big difference between the stock market and the, the cryptocurrency market is that because it's based on software, is that it's scalable, which means um, uh, if you uh, uh, want to buy a Bitcoin, you don't have to have $15,000 sitting somewhere and buy one Bitcoin to, to, to get a token. You can invest $1 or 50 cent into Bitcoin and you get a 0.00001% of a token. So it's scalable. The smallest unit, which is called a Satoshi, which has to do with the, the inventor of, of Bitcoin, is 100 millionths of a Bitcoin. That's very important to understand, the scalability of cryptocurrencies. Another thing that you can um, click on, and I'm, I'm, I'm only pointing out the things that make sense for you, is the volume. Where is the most market capital flowing into? What is that? That where are people investing into currently the last 24 hours so when you click on volume you'll see Bitcoin tether you'll see a few of these and you'll see the number you can see the difference here Bitcoin is the high is, is where the most volume flows into and then the next uh, 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 token that is uh, you know the second highest volume is flowing into tether right now uh, with only it's only one thirteenth of that so this explains the um the bitcoin dominance okay uh, then you can also sort the view by market capital altogether, which means how much money have they raised with this uh with this currency okay 
So you see, of course, here Bitcoin at the very uh, uh, top of the list with the uh, 257 billion dollars currently invested in Bitcoin alone. And then you see Ethereum here as the second uh, largest uh, uh, cryptocurrency and Bitcoin Cash and so forth. Okay, and if you go a little further down the list, you'll see how these numbers are tiny. I mean, it's still, you know, still like 250 you know, million dollars, but compared to 250 billion dollars, that's a huge difference. So I, I, I'm just trying to make you, to familiarize you a little bit with this view. Okay, because uh, it, you, when you come to these sites, it's very important to lose your fear of this. And especially if you've never traded anything. When you click on a name, and let's do this for Bitcoin, okay? When you click on a name, you get more info. And that's what I want to, uh, uh, I want you to do. I just want you to, to, to research a little bit and play around with this a little bit, okay? First of all, you get, of course, the links. And you get uh, a bit more information about the last 24 hours. Okay, so in the last 24 hours, Bitcoin has risen 6.66%. However, in the last week, Bitcoin was already at $20,000 and is now down to 15. And uh, there's uh, some, some reasons for that, which I will also go into probably in three hours from now. <laughs> so we're going to have to look at some point probably uh, switch this up a bit, uh, maybe uh, cut into a second part. Um, so here you can see the whole history of Bitcoin over the years and what is happening with the course of Bitcoin. And if you, I'm, I'm just like really hovering my mouse over this. If you hold the mouse and just sort of click a certain time period I've just uh, clicked here, approximated from the uh, uh, end of November till the, right now, you see something a bit more detailed, namely how the Bitcoin course has developed in the last two weeks. So this was here at, check this out, the highest one is 18. It was uh, up to 20,000 and some uh, exchanges and went back down and is now slowly regaining. There were some news here in the last couple of days. I mentioned this in the energy update in regards to the uh, traditional uh, stock brokerage and uh, the announcement that they're gonna be a uh, Bitcoin futures traded on the stock markets. This led to an increase from, this happened on the 7th, Bitcoin being at like 12,000 to almost 20,000 in one day. It was a little bit of a hype and went down. There's many reasons for that, which we cannot uh, um, um, go into right now because I don't want to bore you. But um, uh, just so you know, there's a very high volatility, volatility meaning lots of gains, lots of losses, but there is an overall, um, there's an overall tendency, and that is, if you look at the, the basic chart of Bitcoin, here, looking like exponential growth. And for those of you who were here in the cryptocurrency workshop in October, do you guys remember where the Bitcoin value was at that time? When we were talking with Sebastian here, yes, it was at 5,900. And we were celebrating that it was breaking through the 6,000 threshold. Now we're looking at 15,000. And there are predictions uh, for Bitcoin for the end of the year. Um, and I don't want to scare you guys, but uh, more than 20,000. There's predictions that I've seen for the end of the year all the way up to 40,000 because it's going to uh, become a matter of speculation for the stock market who hasn't even entered this uh, whole crypto world yet okay so while this seems like phenomenal okay so let's assume 
you know, uh, Bitcoin is going to be at 20,000 maybe by the end of the year. Sounds like, you know, a lot of gain, 20, 25 percent that you can make if you just invest in Bitcoin to the end of the year. But that's nothing compared to some of these other tokens who have three or four or five digit increase rates. We've seen these things going on all year round. Okay. And this will continue next year. What are the right picks? We're going to go into this. But before we, we go more into the details of tokens, I want you to, to be feel more secure with looking at these things. This, there are some very important things that you can uh, find here in, in coinmarketcap.com. And that is not only the course of the tokens, but also the market volume. That's this uh, chart down here gives you the volume, how much money, how much US dollars is flowing into this. Did you see what happened here in this one day? From 280, uh, from uh, looking at $17 billion, jumping up to $22 billion. Those are things you need to pay attention to. When there is a lot of money flowing into a specific coin all of the sudden that means that there are people heavily investing in something and they usually know what they're doing so pay attention to this another thing um, and this will come up here when we talk about how to trade your cryptos is how, how can I find out where to trade this is uh, one of the biggest or, or the most uh, frequently asked question that I get here at coinmarketcap.com you click on markets and here you will see different markets different exchanges where bitcoin is being traded at the moment 400 they stop at 400 different ones my uh, a tip for you if you want to know uh, sort of where to go um, you know, pick the one out of the first five. I you know some are a little limited for the American market. So not all, like Bitfinex, for instance, does not allow you to trade cryptocurrencies if you are a, a resident of the United States. But the rest of the world uses uh, uh, quite a bit of, uh, of Bitfinex. Hang on. Are those places where I should purchase coins? No. Dead. Those are places where you can trade coins, and we'll, we'll get to this here in a second. There is easier ways to buy coins, but those are the ones where the trading is going on. All right. So, and, and it also shows you how they're being traded here. Uh, this is a, a Korean currency. So, at this very moment, and this is the cool thing about blockchain, guys. You did not have that information unless you were licensed stock market broker. And blockchain, you have that information at your fingertips for free. This is showing you that at Bitsump right now, there is $2 billion, like right this minute, being put into Bitcoin in Korean currency. It shows you the market movers where this is happening and this can be important information for you if you want to find out what's going on in the market okay then you look at these things okay there's this is a japanese yen okay so the the amount of money coming in from korean markets right now is almost double the amount that is coming in from some of the u.s markets okay these are uh, just interesting information for those of you uh, who have already spent a little time with this. You also get their social uh, media appearance of each to to um, uh, token when you go and when you click on the social tab um, and tools. You know, those are all things that um, I uh, encourage you to, to explore by yourself. You just need to know that this is available to you, okay? here at, at, at Bitcoin, um, Bit, uh, 
uh, at coinmarket.com. All right, and you, you'll get this information for every currency that you click on. All right, are there any questions as to how to use these uh, market overview, the, how to use this market overview software? Please ask here. This is what why we why we uh, why we're doing this here. Does anybody want to ask a question about how to get a certain kind of information on those um, on those uh, uh, trading overview programs? Okay. All right. So um, <clears throat> then I can move ahead. So pay attention to this number up here. It gives you an idea of how much money is flowing into it. And um, of course, pay attention to the course. Uh, and those of you who have done trading before, um, look at the, uh, the charts. And those of you who know a lot about trading, this is where you can study the charts. And there are trading tools, of course, for, for uh, cryptocurrencies that are available that you have to buy. Um, you know, if you go, if you want to do uh, like a more in-depth chart analysis, which I don't think any one of you needs unless you uh, plan on becoming a, a professional uh, cryptocurrency portfolio manager. Okay, so let's move um, back to our slides here real quick and see um, uh, what is coming up next. Uh, the terminology of the of uh, the the technology. Um, is something that I've summarized in a 15-minute video. What do all these these words mean? But I'm, I'm only bringing this up here uh, uh, to to uh, uh, hint back at these different words. Okay, so digital currency, cryptocurrency um, uh, encompasses all of the different kind of tokens that are out there. Okay, um, altcoins, however, is a word that that you will find in videos or in articles uh, uh, referring to a specific kind of token, and that is the, the coins that are uh, have a specific use that um, companies use to fund their uh, uh, projects or to, to fund their, their uh, the growth of their company and who are not specifically used as currency. Okay, this is very important to understand. So we have the digital currencies, which is Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, Litecoin, and a few others. Um, and then we have the altcoins, and altcoins are more comparable with the investment into companies. Okay, where, uh, you know, they have ICOs, uh, initial coin offerings, just like uh, in the stock market where they would have IPOs. Um, uh, where they come out with an idea with a new company and then uh, in this uh, initial coin offering you can buy uh, 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 tokens from that company um, uh, as investment and just like with IPOs uh, uh, heed my warning here 95 percent of those are not going to make it however a big however because there's going to be so much capital flowing into cryptocurrencies over the next year and two. The next two years are really important, as a really important window. You can barely make a mistake unless you actually invest into scams. But other than that, there's a few scams that were already uncovered, you know, people who have just uh, sort of fake companies and just uh, raise 200 million dollars you know based on nothing okay this happens so that's why I, I, I recommend to to not go overboard with your enthusiasm and to always do your due diligence and to um, uh, uh, do your research okay but um, only because of the huge amounts of money of, of capital that are flowing into the cryptocurrency market uh, in these next two years, it is almost impossible to to, to buy into the wrong thing. Okay, um, and my personal experience uh, in this past year with ICOs is that um, you know you don't need to be there at the beginning of uh, a, a company's uh, initial coin offering. Yes, you can make 
hundred, two hundred, ten thousand percent gains. Uh, but in my experience, this is not really what happens with those ICOs. They 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 you know get a, a, a big a huge gain, you know, a couple of hundred percent uh, within the first week, and then there is a huge sell off. Um, the psychology of that is different from the stock market and you usually end up being able to buy those ICOs, those initial coins, coin offerings a cheaper, you know, a couple of weeks after the ICO than at the actual ICO. This is what it has been in the past. This may be different in the future, but the reason why I'm saying this is because you need to understand the psychology of the market because this is not a market of professional traders as of right now. You are seeing a lot of uh, volatility based on emotionality and irrationality. And that's uh, something that uh, Cheryl has uh, mentioned at the beginning, the sanity aspect and the energetic aspect is quite challenging because you are dealing with 16 year olds, you're dealing with people who have no experience in trading, who are investing, you know, the, the hundred dollars that they have on their savings accounts that are very, very emotional. So we are dealing with a with a situation um, that I've often compared here with Wild West, with an extremely high volatility. And unless you know exactly what you're doing, I don't. Okay, be advised, you know, to not buy into any hypes because people are extremely irrational. And when you go to the, the, the only sources that we have right now for information, which is YouTube and a few really good courses, all right, um, then you will find a lot of um, a sort of pump and dump, as they call it. Pump and dump is, is like an individual YouTubers, you know, who, who are getting rich or got rich with, the, with certain coins and who are pumping them, meaning hyping up their viewers. And these people don't forget. I mean, some of these have a, a viewer base of millions of people, okay? If they say, well, I just got, you know, um, I just made, two hundred thousand dollars with this coin and you've got to buy into this you know to pump up the price and then they sell off which then lowers the price you know uh, right afterwards uh, that is uh, considered to be a non-integrous uh, type of thing to do but this happens a lot and that's uh, why you need to be so careful or cautious because uh, you, you don't know enough yet to discern okay so uh, uh, just be advised, you know, <clears throat> always do your own um, uh, research and the best research tool uh, uh, or to, the best tool to start with is the coinmarketcap.com and then from there you can go deeper into social media, into their white papers, into their um, uh, uh, press releases, into what other people say and so forth. All right, somebody's asking here, what about Ethereum? I think this question came in when I talked about currencies. Ethereum is not exactly a currency. Ethereum is a software protocol, probably the most important protocol for the future. Ethereum is a very intelligent um, piece of software um, with a very high integrity level uh, that is providing the software tools for these companies who want to um, create applications you know, such as what I, what I mentioned, you know, examples that I mentioned earlier, say like frequent flyer type of things or uh, lending companies, or I mean, there is absolutely no limit to the use, but you have to program these things with software, these smart contracts and Ethereum um, is a, a product or a, a protocol that provides this, um, uh, this environment for uh, and tools for software programmers and it's open source. So anything open source, you know, um, uh, as Cheryl also mentioned, um, uh, uh, is based on the decentralized idea of the blockchain and therefore provides a, um, a truth and trust level. So those are things uh, that uh, are important to understand. Where can you get this information about individual points in you know, start at coinmarketcap.com and then you can read what this token is for, okay? And you do a little bit of of research there. Just focus on the first 10 tokens, maybe uh, it, it depends on your time. 
what is an altcoin? I just explained that an altcoin is everything that is not a currency. Bitcoin is a currency. Bitcoin Cash is a currency. But Ethereum is not. It can be used as a security. It can be used as parking your money, as storing your money, in, but it actually has a use. So altcoins are those um, tokens that um, actually have a use or that um, uh, uh, allow you to to uh, get a service with it or uh, that represent shares in the companies, equity in the companies. Ethereum, yes, strictly spoken, Ethereum is an altcoin. However, um, it will often uh, be um, uh, compared to currencies because it is um, so popular and recognized as you know, like really safe environment that you you'll always see it here in, in uh, second or third place. So it it could be used as a currency, but um, it's not really designed as a currency. Um, meaning uh, to pay uh, at a store in Ethereum. Um, however, you need Ethereum to pay for buying other altcoins, and that's why. Um, uh, people often use it as a, a, or, or compare it with a currency because uh, many of the other coins, many of the other tokens that are out there, they are based on the Ethereum environment, which means, uh, is, you know, Ethereum provides uh, companies with the ability to do their own tokens. And so uh, if you want to buy a token um, that is based on the Ethereum um, a protocol, uh, then you need to have Ethereum first to buy those. Yeah. All right, so let's uh, move on. There are some uh, questions here that you were asking that we will uh, uh, cover here in a minute. Okay, accounts. This is a, a question that just came in and uh, uh, that we need to cover here, which is very important. So um, just like how you have a, a bank account, you know, that allows you to move your money around, um, and there are accounts in the crypto world and they are usually called wallets. Now, some of you who have iPhones or other phones have a tab on your phone that says uh, wallets and then there is maybe a, an Apple wallet there or you may have already signed up for wallets without actually knowing what that is. So a wallet is basically nothing but a software account. Okay. However, in the past, you know, when you think of a bank account, you had to go to a bank or, you know, virtual banks such as uh, uh, PayPal and apply for an account there um, that only manages your money or your funds at that bank. Right, and if you wanted to have an account uh, with a different bank, then you had to go to a different bank. All right, that's centralized. The decentralized idea allows it for you to have a software wallet that can handle different currencies, different, you know, different uh, uh, um, uh, locations of your funds. Okay, because it's all software, so you not there's no middleman. Remember, so these. Uh, um, wallets okay they are not like banks they're just a piece of software and they're for free so if you go and uh, we're gonna do this step by step later um, if you go into uh, one of the, the wallets that uh, I had uh, previously uh, recommended or you know just listed because you, in my my personal tip would be go on to uh, Google and and search for you know the best or most convenient or most easy to use wallets okay because they're all a little different some of them are easier to use than others I um, recommend coinbase um, they're all free coinbase is easy to use it's the I mean probably the um, the fastest for you to actually uh, go ahead and do movements but we're gonna go through how to do this step by step here in a little bit so wallets are your accounts, okay? And you can have software wallets, which are the ones that you have on your computer or on your phone. You know, the ones that you have on your computer, they can also be linked to your phone, just like your bank account can. 
uh, and vice versa. Uh, and then there are hardware wallets. Hardware wallets are wallets that uh, come like uh, a little memory stick or like, like a mini hard drive where you can basically move your funds from your computer, you know, onto that external hard drive, which is uh, one of the safe practices that I recommend you to do. And um, uh, so there are two hardware wallets that are um, uh, predominantly used. Uh, they're both suck, if you want my personal opinion, but um, uh, this is at this very moment, probably the safest way um, to store away your currencies if you're not trading. If you just want to get some uh, uh, cryptocurrencies and then store them away like in a safety box, get a hardware wallet. They're roughly, um, you know, anywhere from 80 to 100 dollars and it's like a little mini hard drive. It's very important that you understand that, uh, you know, just like with bank accounts, I don't know about you, but my bank account got hacked um, a couple months back. Um, you know, your your software wallets can be hacked as well. So it, they're no less or more safe than, uh, than your bank accounts. You know, it's just that because there are so many people um, uh, currently flowing into the crypto market, that there is a lot of uh, insecurity about how to use it and people make a lot of mistakes, a lot of safety mis mistakes at this point. That's why I, I want to guide you through this. Security tip. Oh, there's uh, before uh, I get to security tips here, there's a third kind of wallet and that's a paper wallet. That is uh, uh, something that every software wallet actually offers you. And that is to actually print out your mm, private key, as they call this, which is uh, comparable with the password to your cryptocurrency wallet, um, uh, to print this out and to store this somewhere. And uh, it, this leads me to the security tips. And, uh, you know, judging by the amount of emails that I get and the type of questions, this is where you have to pay 100% attention. First of all, just like any data on your computer, uh, none of that is private. I mean, except the fact that unless you are a hacker yourself, <laughs> any data that you have on your computer is accessible for others. Maliciously, of course, but um, some of that uh, legally, you know, through cookies and so forth, uh, which is a big issue uh, within uh, the whole internet um, sphere because uh, for the most part, uh, companies like Google or Facebook actually own your data. You've, by opening up a Facebook account, you agree that Facebook owns your data. Okay, those are aspects of the blockchain um, and why uh, we recommend this as a higher vibratory tool because um, uh, with this whole uh, blockchain technology, you actually become the owner of your data. Okay, so uh, if you believe that any of the, 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 the data that you have on your computer right now, no matter what kind of security measures, firewall or whatever you have, you're in an illusion. It's not. And therefore, anything with money, anything with money, also with normal bank accounts, you know, requires specific security uh, uh, for you, especially when it comes to storing funds, okay? Tip number one, when you open up a wallet, you get this private key slash your password, but this private key is like a, I forgot how many digits. I think it's 14 digits, I'm not sure, um, uh, uh, password. And then you also get, um, uh, with some of them, you get a list of uh, um, words that uh, are comparable with those security questions, but those are words that the blockchain generates, 12 words. And without these 12 words, you cannot recover your funds. So you have to write those down. And the big, big, big recommendation is do not ever store these 12 words on your computer in digital form. Write them down in handwriting, create a second copy of it. If you take a photo of it, know that anyone who has uh, access to your phone, which is a big issue right now, uh, um, uh, phone phishing, uh, then know that this is not safe, okay? 
So you have to write your your private keys down, wrist you know preferably ball, ball pen, you know or ink that doesn't fade, and on a piece of paper and literally put it away where it cannot, you know, burn or whatever. Because if if you know anything ever happens, the only way for you to uh, re recover your stored software funds is through this chain of words okay so number one rule print it out take a screen shot um, print it out write it down in handwriting and then remove the digital copy on your computer remove that from your computer rule number two the biggest security risk at this very moment is our phones. Personally, I don't use any wallets on my phone, only because, you know, I have a three-year-old. <laughs> uh, you know, my, my phone got run over by a car last month. I mean, there's, you know, my phone is not really a, a place that I can 100% control uh, besides um, uh, all the uh, software phishing that is going on with phones. So there has been a lot of cases, especially in the last couple of months, of uh, phone phishing or phone hacking where uh, people have hacked into um, the uh, the data stored with uh, your, your cell phone provider, which literally gives people, uh, you know, everything, you know, about your uh, identity. In other words, it, it, all the information that you gave your phone company can be used to access uh, uh, your software and with that also your wallets. Yeah, someone here says, um, uh, we printed it out and laminated, la laminated it to store it away. That makes sense. Thanks, Margie. That's a really good tip to laminate it because, I mean, we're thinking long term here, right? So um, if it's not laminated, you know, the ink may fade or whatever. Um, uh, and it's not a bad idea to have a little, you know, sort of fire safe uh, safety box uh, for these kind of things. I mean, you know, if, if you're dealing you know, with hundred dollars, it's not a big deal. But if you're dealing with big amounts and some of you guys can make a lot of money here with this kind of information within the next year. Okay, please, um, you know, heed those uh, security tips. Number three. Do not go on to Google and type in how to buy Bitcoin and click on the first thing that you see there. You know, every time, um, let's do this very quick because this is really important to understand. Every time you, you, you go on to Google, all right, which, um, you know, stores all your preferences, has access to, you know, uh, some of the, the activities that you did you know, the last couple of days these, with so-called cookies. It will provide a list for you where to buy Bitcoin. I want to do this right now just to show you what happens um, and generate ads for you. Every time, you know, you go on Google and you see this little sign here at the top of your list. OK, this is something that was produced based on, you know, the cookies on your computer, based on, on the things that you've done. Ignore those. No matter what it is that you're searching for, always ignore those. There's a lot of misuse there. Okay. Um, Bitcoin.org and Bitcoin.com are safe sites to look up information. Those are, those are, those are things that are OK. Um, you know, uh, and they give you a good uh, introduction and you'll you'll see what they say first inform yourself pretty much what I've been talking about this last hour and a half already I can't believe it choose your wallet okay uh, if you go onto uh, Google and type in Bitcoin wallets oops you'll get this whole list okay um, again here, uh, you know, I, I like uh, uh, checking out sort of lists, the, bet, the best um, or uh, the most uh, easy to use. Okay, so here is a, uh, an article, uh, uh, the best uh, Bitcoin wallets uh, to use. First here, hardware wallets, Ledger is a hardware wallet. Um, Trezor is the other uh, uh, hardware wallet. I have a Trezor, some of you have a Ledger. Um, well, they, they 
both suck, but <laughs> all this is technology that is, is going to improve a lot over the next year. Okay, and then here's a Coinbase a Bitcoin wallet review. Uh, they have this at first uh, place there. I agree with this. Coinbase is a very easy uh, uh, software wallet, and there's lots of videos on YouTube that show you how to open up a Coinbase account. I'm going to do this with you here uh, in a few minutes, but I just want you to know that you can use Google, but please don't click on the ads because there's uh, been cases um, of uh, uh, phishing uh, sites that use ads. So don't uh, uh, trust in, in the ads ever. I never do. I never click on them. Um, uh, and then um, uh, uh, in, in general with security, you know, um, don't uh, uh, go for these uh, software sites that, uh, you know, appetize like easy to buy, you know, and, and we are handling all this for you, okay, because then you're buying back into the idea of a middleman. You don't need a middleman. You get a Coinbase account, for example, you know, a software wallet, it doesn't cost you anything and you can buy Bitcoin there and, and that's it. You don't need a middleman. Okay, it's very easy to use and we're going to go through this, but I just want you to know that this is not like uh, that you need uh, anybody to do this for you. So please, uh, you know, those of you who've emailed me, should I buy Bitcoin here or there? No, don't. Get a wallet first and then buy your Bitcoin yourself. And there are certain aspects to, to installing your your your. your software wallet that uh, I'm going to cover here but one thing I want to mention with, uh, to you that is important because the blockchain is open source meaning that it's everybody can look into it there is the, the something that we have never had before and that is you can track your own transactions at any time I'm not going to do this here with you I was going to do this with you here but and we're running out of time but you can you can always track your transactions on the blockchain there are um, uh, blockchain explorers as they call them that allow you to literally see every single transaction that was I mean it's millions billions but you have it like a transaction number basically for your transaction like say you bought Bitcoin you know and you can track it you can track where your money went and um, you know where everything you know ended up in okay so if you ever feel like you lost something or something is not going the way it should be you know know that you can track uh, your transactions and just so you know because the technology is still in the birthing stages uh, there are wait times right now so when you do a Bitcoin transaction it can take um, a few minutes, sometimes all the way to 30 minutes, especially with Bitcoin, because Bitcoin is so heavily traded right now uh, that, that they, you know, that there's a little bit of a traffic jam sometimes. Okay, so don't think just because it hasn't appeared in your wallet right this moment when you bought it doesn't mean that your money's lost. It, just give it time, so it'll say something like pending. Okay, and then you'll be able to see it on your wallet you know half an hour later so you got to be a bit forgiving here because the software is not yet where we need it to be to feel entirely uh, uh, like safe with everything so you're gonna sweat every time you do, <laughs> do a transaction and I want to ask you guys before you fall asleep here or before I lose you those of you who have already sort of entered the crypto market who of you has had a near heart attack or heart palpitations making your first transaction? Who would like to share with the audience? I'll share again. I, I have, I've waited hours, literally hours for transactions to go through and because my fear kicks in, I don't know where it is and I automatically come up with the worst case scenario that it's lost forever and yeah and then and then and then still mess up on the other end like presently I have money in a contract somewhere 
and I have to go fishing for it, but I have to be in a really good frame of mind to do that because I'm not exactly sure how. And if I'm at all vulnerable while I go look for it, I'll lose my shit. There'll be tears and anger and it'll be bad. So I really have to wait till I'm in a good space to go find something that I don't know where it is. And, and I guess for the folks who haven't moved into this um, realm yet, what I'm saying to you sounds like, what the hell is she talking about? But uh, because the learning curve is so high again. But yeah, I, I sometimes a trade will go through or a purchase will go through and it's in there in seconds. And other times it's been hours. I, I actually, even a whole day went by and I just kind of wrote off that I just blew a bunch of money, but it's somewhere. I have I have that tracking, like you said. I can I can put in the, the hash whatever it's called and find it. I'm <laughs> just not in a good space to do it yet. <laughs> yes, so you have to be you have to be um, patient uh, sometimes. The reason why this takes time is because the blockchain is kind of like a train system, and so every transaction is being put into a cart and then it's being moved to the next you know station. And sometimes there can be jams. Okay. Well, and, and it also that, depends on how much gas you use too, and mm -hmm. I'm still trying to figure that out. Yes, um, that's something I wasn't going to go into today, but there is, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's complicated for most people. But um, there is, uh, you know, like um, the, the the whole blockchain uh, and net that's behind that. Okay, which are the miners? The miners are the ones that provide their computers for the blockchain to run. Okay, and as a reward, they get a little piece of, of a, a, a cryptocurrency that they pick. All right, and sometimes, you know, there is not enough miners to, to uh, uh, do the transaction fast enough because every transaction needs a certain number of confirmations. Okay, and sometimes it can take a little bit, like, um, you know, like three days ago when this uh, huge hype uh, broke out after the announcement of the CME that they're going to be Bitcoin futures and that this uh, uh, is moved to the 18th of December, uh, you know, all of a sudden everybody bought into Bitcoin and it took, you know, two, three hours for your transaction to go through. It's there. You don't need to worry and it's going to be done. It just needs to be worked through. Okay. Somebody's got to process that. Okay, so this is where the miners come in. The miners provide the processing power for that. And when there is a sudden run, then there can be traffic jams. You know, like there, there, there can be a wait time. Okay. Uh, the next, uh, uh, is there anybody else who wants to share their, their heart attack stories? I can just share my own. The first uh, transaction that I did uh, was I bought Ethereum because to me that is uh, not only the, the, the people behind it, but the intelligence and that and, and, and the, uh, the, mm, the integrity and, and the whole spirit behind that is like way up on top of my list. And it took a couple of hours till I actually, and then I couldn't find it in my wallet. I'm like, where, where is it? You know, the transaction got confirmed and then I couldn't see it because the software, you know, those are all um, public domain pieces of software that, you know, you don't pay anything for them. So they're not really user friendly. And it was just like numbers and numbers. And I'm like, gosh, just tell me if I have the money and where is it? You know, where is my Ethereum? Okay. So the first time I did this, I broke out in sweats. I thought I had lost you know everything that i had and i was uh, in a very grumpy state until you know i finally found it and i was like okay that was like hours later and uh, yes cheryl i know this from you and some of uh, the others here that you've gone through the exact same thing um uh, it, this is something to be expected so i like your tip here to be in a good space for that because like i cannot deal with cryptos for instance, in between uh, energy coaching or energy sessions. It really trashes my energy there for a moment. Um, uh, and then uh, uh, the first transaction, the first training I did was uh, I bought into an ICO. And uh, this was like, I mean, nothing worked. And uh, this was like a total sort of 
just trust in the universe that this is gonna work out. And it took days, it took days until I actually had the token that I bought in my wallet, okay? So you've got to understand that the blockchain is a system that is based on trust, meaning once your transaction is out there, it's there. It's, it just can take a while for it to be processed. And that's why there's so much Wild West because people not only go into this panic mode very quickly, there's also a lot of people who take advantage of that, okay? So um, uh, uh, the next subject here of storing your cryptos um, is, is a very important uh, one because um, most of you, especially since you don't have any experience with trading stocks beforehand, you know, in the old days when you bought stocks off a company, you actually got the paper stock, right? And you put that into your safety, safety deposit. Uh, the, since the days of the internet, that, that is not the case anymore. But you know, you're a registered shareholder somewhere. And with, with cryptocurrencies, uh, that is is the case and not. It is the case in that it's your transaction is stored on the blockchain forever, you know, but, um, you know, it, it, you don't, you're not really holding anything other than your wallet saying, okay, you've got so and so many tokens of this cryptocurrency. So you have to store this some way. The wallet that you use to get it is not the place to store it. That's very, very important. And also the exchange, you know, the, the market where you buy it is not the place to store it. Guys, do not forget that. Once you get your Bitcoin or any other altcoin, you've got to move it. The first uh, part is moving it out of the out of the, the exchange that you bought it at. Now, if you were buying Bitcoin, say, through your wallet and they have an automated process for that, you don't have to go to an exchange. But if you uh, actually go to an exchange and buy the cryptocurrency there directly, where all the traders buy and sell them, you have to move it out of the exchange. It is not the storage place. So you can keep it on your wallet for a little bit, for as long as you want to make moves with it. But if you have, uh, you know, the idea of, of buying a little bit of Bitcoin and then storing it away and just keeping it there sort of as a security, you got to move it out. And uh, one way or the, the, the safest way to do this is into those uh, mentioned hardware wallets onto, you know, your physical wallet that you can carry around with you. Okay. Do you have questions about this? I understand that if you've never done this before, this may still all seem theoretical, but does everybody get this? You cannot leave your cryptocurrencies on the exchanges and preferably not on the wallets either. It's very, very important, guys. Just so everybody knows, I, I bought the, the Ledger Nano wallet and you used the Tracer and it, it looks like a little data stick. You physically get it and, and like Yona said, it'll have it'll have a password and you need to lock it away in this fire safe box or whatever, but it is physically like like holding your like gold coins in your pocket, right? Yeah. That, that you have it and that if you lose it or it burns in a fire, you don't get your money back. Like that, it's in there and it's locked in there, and that's the security behind it. And it is complicated to get it going at the front end, but like Yona said, it's it's not of an access point to anybody that hacks you. Never, they'll never get it. So if you're gonna will it to somebody, make sure they know where those twelve passwords are. Yeah. So this is what this looks like here. You can see this on your screen. This is what the ledger. Um, hardware wallet looks like and this is what the Trezor uh, hardware wallet it's a it's um, as big as a matchbox okay and it's connected to the USB but it's like an external hard drive okay somebody's asking is there a digital wallet that is for good you know for storing no only leave money that you want to you know currencies that you want to trade in your wallet that you want to move around. If you are done, and we, we, get, we come to this here in a minute, 
um, uh, if you have a like a, what they call a portfolio, if you have you know the currencies that you want, or even if it's just Bitcoin, and you just you decide to let it just sit there for two years, which is what you will hear me recommend over and over again. There is no digital wallet that is safe because <coughs> because I go through like one computer a year. Okay, these the, the, your computers are not safe places. You just got to understand that. Okay, and you don't you you want to avoid a situation where you know you lose your phone or you get a new phone or you get a new computer and you have no way of accessing things. That's why you want it on a physical, in a physical place. So you can move that around with you. And if you get a new phone or if you get a new computer, then it's no problem at all. You can all access it because it's on that piece of hardware. Okay. Taxation. Taxation is not easy to answer right now because there is no uh, real regulations in general. And by the way, this is different in every country and in the, within the United States, also different within the states. Um, but in general, uh, you know, like the, the the gain that you get out of uh, uh, your cryptocurrencies if you transfer them back into your fiat currency, you know, like dollars. Like say I buy, uh, let's say I bought Bitcoin in October for 5,900 and right now it's 15,000 I cash them back out and have the US dollar amount on my account again uh, then I have to tax the gain which uh, accounts as capital gain if you own Bitcoin um, and you never um, uh, cashing them out uh, then that's a gray area right now that has not been addressed yet in all countries but the moment you cash out your your uh, cryptocurrencies, you have ex you have experienced a, a capital gain, and that needs to be taxed. Okay, any questions? Please ask. Okay, nobody has a question here. Okay, spending. Um, this is a very frequent question that I get. You know, like, well, okay, so I got Bitcoin and. And there are some uh, uh, places where you can spend Bitcoin, uh, you know, like uh, uh, Amazon is, is about to make that announcement that you'll be able to uh, pay in Bitcoin. Um, you know, uh, those you'll see now for the, in the next year popping out the, the uh, you know, everywhere like mushrooms. Okay, so, so uh, companies, service providers, and even you know stores or online stores such as Amazon will announce that they accept Bitcoin as currency. Okay, so that means that all you need to do is have your address from your wallet. That your your wallet has an address. It's it's this this number string. And uh, when you buy something, instead of going to PayPal or instead of typing in your credit card number, you type in your uh, wallet number. Okay, and then it will transfer the money from get your, your digital currency wallet to, let's say, Amazon, as soon as they have that, okay? There are a lot of merchants already that accept Bitcoin, um, and it's more of, of, of the exception right now, but in the future, you will see this more and more. If you do not live in the United States or Canada, you can uh, have a wallet at places such as Bitwalla, um, who, offer you a debit card with your wallet i love those and there is companies like crypto companies that are specialized on that such as 10x they offer you a debit card with your crypto wallet and everywhere in the world you, you can use them except for in the united states and canada and, and some of the territories is uh, Transcode's going to accept them Bitcoin? Absolutely. Um, you know, it, I've been wanting to do this for two years, but um, I'm kind of waiting for PayPal uh, to integrate um, cryptocurrencies in their checkout system. It's just a matter of time for me to integrate that. I could use a different um, a payment method that, that uses cryptos, but 
to be honest with you, for most of you, that is still um, too complicated, the checkout process right now. So I'm waiting for companies such as you trust uh, that I have uh, mentioned before, a crypto company that is providing a payment system with cryptos that just had their ICO um, uh, to come out with software within the next months. All that is changing within a matter of months, guys. I mean, again, here you are at the birthing stage. But if you, you know, don't... My question, my question about spending with, with Bitcoin, with, with the value of Bitcoin going up, why would we spend with it when we could be, what's the word, hodl? Wouldn't it be better to hodl with it than spend it at this point? Yes, that is a very good a point that you're making there because at this very moment where cryptos are rising in, in value, I mean, beyond anything that we've ever seen with currencies. I mean, when you, if you look at the US dollar, for instance, that, ha that has been um, under the influence of a devaluation over the last uh, 30 years, okay, uh, then um, it makes no sense. But sometimes, and I've been in this situation, I didn't really have any US dollar funds. I only had crypto funds, you know, and um, I did uh, buy things in cryptos. And you will also find more and more that there are people within the crypto sphere for instance, that sell courses or, you know, tools that can help you uh, to to gain a better overview that that can make things easier. That they only accept cryptocurrencies. I have had tools that I bought that you could only pay in Bitcoin or Litecoin in cryptocurrency. You could not pay in dollars. You will see this more and more happening. But what uh, Cheryl just. Um, uh, brought up is like why would I spend my you know promising cryptocurrencies where they gain in value practically every day correct this is where the whole uh, uh, question of uh, what is your uh, strategy comes in you know what is your strategy with your cryptocurrencies and and how are you gonna treat that how are you gonna handle that and that leads us here to the next point namely trading and investing Okay, so the, the simplest thing that you can do at this very moment is to just get a Bitcoin wallet, wallet somewhere, buy some Bitcoin and just leave them there or stack up, keep buying. I've, I've, I've recommended this or I've been recommending this for months to build a position to just get bit. This is easy. You can buy Bitcoin with your credit card, with PayPal, no problem. All right, and just leave them there. Put them on your hardware wallet preferably you know and don't do anything if if, if, if you find this uh, really scary everything that we that we share here um, uh, then uh, be advised that it's okay you know to not do anything do not do any trading or investment into ICOs you'll still make money just get back home and leave them there excuse me no no I'm sorry I just wanted to jump in with a comment for, for this is how I'm looking at it. I don't have much money to, to deal with uh, right now. But if I know that that um, I can relatively easily get out any money that I put in, um, mm -hmm. then it enables me to invest money that I don't feel uh, like it, it's money that I might need to, to use if something happens, the car breaks down or something. But in a market like this right now, if I can even have it for a few months or a year in the market, knowing that I can still access it if I need to fix the car, that's still going to be huge for somebody like in my position. Yes. And and understand that your wallet allows you to um, not only buy cryptos, it also allows you to convert it back into your fiat currency, to send it back to your bank account. So the practical um, a version of that is, like, say, you open up um, a Coinbase account, which doesn't cost anything. You buy Bitcoin, like, say, you buy Bitcoin for $100, right? And that's sitting there. And your car breaks down and you need those $100, then you send it back to your bank account. It takes two days. Not because of the, the wallet, because of your bank. <laughs> they keep the money. So 
you just send it back and then you'll have it back on your bank account probably a different amount because uh, because what you get out of uh, selling your bitcoin at that time you know uh, will have a, a, you know a, a different value most likely a higher value those of you who live outside of the united states uh, for you guys it's even easier because you can have a debit card with your crypto account and you can just pay like say for the repair you know let's say the repair of the car costs you five hundred dollars let's say you have the value of five hundred dollars or more on your crypto wallet uh, you can pay the US dollar or whatever the local currency uh, amount is with your debit card and it subtracts it directly from your crypto wallet at the rate of that day does that make sense Deb so you live yeah, in the United yeah. States that's what, that's what I'm imagining is that that's what's making me able to imagine that um, you know that I'll be able to put um, money in there that uh, is not money like initially I was thinking I would only invest what I could really walk away from which to be honest is not anything that I have right now but I mean I think in theory that's a great way to invest but mm -hmm. as I'm learning more it seems like you know it'll be okay to put in some money that I could conceivably need um, you know in my life in the near future mm -hmm. and still take advantage of what is you know it's not a sure thing in any sense but it's certainly a very likely um, opportunity to, to increase what I have to work with. The way I see this now is I remember back 20 years ago before we could imagine the internet being a thing let alone being a thing that everyone in the world participated and depended on. That's exactly oh, what this is. Yeah. That's exactly where, where uh, this uh, where the, this crypto world is at this very moment. It's at the birthing stage. And in uh, and I'm not exaggerating. I mean, when I say this will change our world forever, I'm not exaggerating. I get that. And this will happen within the next couple of years. So fast, you have no idea. I mean, it's just like with the smartphones. Remember, the, 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 the iPhone only had their 10th anniversary today, uh, this year. 10 years ago was when the first iPhone came out. I don't know what the current number is of people uh, actually using smart tablets or, or handheld uh, um, devices, but I think it's in the 200 billion. And this is still only 20% of all the people in the world. So we're going to see something that is radically changing our world here, not just in regards to money, in regards to everything. Okay, and yes, Deb, I agree with you, and this is a, it's good that you brought that up. Most of us don't have a lot of money, okay? And it is not important to think in terms of, of, of huge sums here, because you don't need huge sums. You can start with five bucks. But my recommendation for you guys since the beginning of the year is get into it, even if it's just with five bucks. There is people who get thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars with a hundred dollar investment and not through day tra trading or anything fancy like that but just exactly how you said it they got into it and they stacked up stack up five bucks every week or whatever whatever you can afford and yes the best strategy which is would be the the next point here is to at this point only invest what you can afford to lose you know what you can can afford to put aside kind of like on a savings account but as you do this, you know, you'll see things growing and that will motivate you to, to continue. All right. I'm not recommending any one of you to go into the deep research of, uh, of all the ICOs that are, no, no, no. But get a foot into this. All right. Because this is a, the, this next year and the next few years really is going to be a time where massive gains can be made, where you guys can get out of your miserable you know sort of job life you know where you just work for money and you never get anything back for it <coughs> into a place where you actually build something okay even if it's just with a hundred bucks that's the message here and whether or not you actually uh, see this just as a long-term investment or whether you 
of want to like really go into trading, that is all up to you. You know, the, 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 the reason why I'm doing this here is to inform you that you can. You have a choice. You can. You don't have to. It takes time, a lot of time right now because it's not easy to navigate through this jungle. And it is a jungle out there. Okay, but if you have the time, if you if you resonate with this, then just be informed that this is a way for you to change your life. Okay, at, at least in, in regards to the financial aspect, the financial abundance. What kind of investment strategy you develop, and and um, you know the, the you know something like a, what they call a portfolio, which is you know sort of different currencies different uh, with different uses with different um, increase rates and so forth it, that requires uh, a, a little bit of, of informing yourself and educating yourself and I've mentioned this before there are some uh, cool courses out there that I recommend and some of them are still kind of bad but they're better than nothing you know so um, uh, the, the, the strategies that you develop um, are something that you need to uh, adjust to your own budget but it is possible with a little bit and uh, continuing to stack over the next two years that so this is this is a window guys to make money without really having to do a lot and 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 some of these sort of conservative ways of, of uh, doing this is with Bitcoin because Bitcoin is what everybody understands or, or at least heard of okay so if you buy it you know like zero 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 you know zero point zero 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 two Bitcoin today you know and you have another hundred dollars after Christmas and another hundred dollars in January or whatever um, you know it, and, and you stack up a little bit uh, you will see this grow you will see this grow and you don't have to do uh, anything but holding. That's why I said earlier, um, at, at this point, you don't have to have a fancy investment strategy. Um, all you really need to do is get in, even with small funds, and then um, stack it as you see it grow. You don't really have to be uh, informed about all the, the political stuff that is going on in the energy updates, uh, which is why I've added the crypto news. A segment to it I'll inform you about big movements you know things that you need to be aware of but uh, for the most part quite honestly right now where we are at today here December 10th if you invest in Bitcoin it's gonna double up over the next year minimum okay and uh, if you invest into into some of the other uh, uh, well-known tokens such as ethereum uh, especially Litecoin uh, right now, um, <clears throat> but Ethereum also, uh, and and some of the other, you know, that Bitcoin Cash, EOS, Neo, all these these uh, um, uh, altcoins that you hear uh, other people talk about, you can't make a mistake. In fact, my investment advice for you, since I'm not a financial advisor, but my tip for you, and this is the way I'm handling this personally. Is get in, stack up, and forget that you put it there, and don't look at it for two years. Okay, <laughs> that would be uh, as something that I can, um, from from you know, like a truth level, integrity level, uh, uh, recommend right now. If you go fancy and you do, you begin to do research on certain um, uh, altcoins, then I strongly recommend you. Uh, to go on YouTube to to uh, listen to what other YouTubers have to say about these. Um, and uh, 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 Cheryl, since you're my panel guest here, uh, this is something that I've done with you. You know, when you had questions, you know, I've also uh, sent you specific links about certain um, altcoins that you invested in, uh, just to give you sort of um, like an idea of, of you know uh, how to look at these whether they're integrous or not okay so these youtubers that i've listed in the energy report um they have they bring out videos about certain coins and tokens and one of the 
One of the things I want to talk to you about that again, Yona, in terms of my emotional state, mm -hmm. I had to stop watching a lot of those because they were speaking above my level of understanding and, and it would just trigger into my, I'm not smart enough and I didn't do this fast enough because they're, they just go like crazy and I'm not, I, that's above my level. I, right. I like what, what you had just said about is just get on a nice slow moving horse, mm -hmm. <laughs> enjoy the scenery and, and, and maybe one day, cause, cause I'm still at that place that I, I just jump into my fear mode and I just have to do baby steps and right. never do it in a hurry. And those, those, a lot of those YouTubers, like you said, they're, they're 25 years old and they're on galloping stallions of insanity. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and that's actually, I made that a specific point here as we're coming to the end of the webinar. And I'll say something about that, but thank you for sharing that. That is true. But sometimes when you hear about a certain token or ICO and you get all hyped up and you buy into it, you know, you need to know what you're getting into. So before you invest into something that is not, uh, say, in the list of, of the top 10, you know, in, in coinmarketcap.com, then you have to go on YouTube. That's the, your only place to, to get information. And then like information that is digested for you a little bit because some of these things, like Cheryl said, are way above our technological understanding. However, um, you know, there's also, uh, you can also do research on Google and all that, but um, it, it, I find it still better to listen to someone who knows what they're talking about then uh, to just read sort of their press releases and stuff like that, you know? So uh, there is, a, a, there's a, you know, like a, a, a desensitization that happens as you uh, listen to these YouTubers where in the beginning you feel like a complete idiot, but after a while, you know, and you, you'll start to feel a bit more um, uh, familiar with some of the terms, that's why I've listed some YouTubers there that, you know, um, all in their different ways, but most of them, if they, if you go and look at their playlists on YouTube, they have some good videos for beginners where they explain things from, you know, zero. Okay. So don't get, uh, uh, you know, the galloping aspect that you, that you mentioned uh, is, is only if you look, if you watch their, their videos that they bring out on a daily basis go back into their playlist because they have done videos like say a year ago or two years ago about uh, the basics, okay, that they can't cover of course every time they do a daily review or something. You understand? So you need to do your due diligence there. But to, to go on this slow horse is definitely something that I recommend everybody listening here because um, even I feel like a, like an illiterate. Okay, so uh, uh, don't think that you have to, you know, be the, the world's biggest crypto investor here. We have not seen anything. As soon as the, the professional um, market and the, gov the governments are moving in at the beginning of the year, there's going to be havoc in this market. I mean, havoc. I mean, we have not seen anything yet. Okay, so just, you know, be be just like slow that's okay you know you got to outpace all that and you can because you don't need to worry about all the ups and downs that are happening on a daily basis all you need to see is the potential here for this entire technology and so no matter what you invest in uh you know like if, if you stay with the the big names you're gonna be all right okay you're gonna be all right there is of course uh, uh, things such as portfolios, uh, recommendations, and, and I put these in my uh, energy updates, um, you know, where, where I, I draw your attention to certain companies that I personally think have either the integrity level or the technology to really become big players. And big players means four digit, five digit, percentage increase so you put a hundred dollars in and in two years the hundred dollars are twenty thousand okay so i'm picking things for you based on my own research 
but I always recommend you guys to also go into your own research. You just don't, just don't get into this daily thing because then you you you, you become part of this uh, this volatility, this up and down, and you go with it emotionally. And the whole market is extremely emotional and irrational right now. So I do not recommend that, but I do recommend to go on YouTube and use that as a source of information. And at the beginning of the year, I'm gonna come, or maybe the end of the year, I'm not sure how this works out with my timeline because we have this getting through the holiday thing, and maybe I'm gonna put this in there. But I'm gonna make some recommendations for you guys as far as like what the altcoins are that I recommend you as of the end of 2017 to put in to your wallet and store it away into your hardware wallet for two years and not look at it okay i'm gonna do this for you but that's it from there you're gonna have to take this on your own i'm gonna inform you on a weekly basis about the big movements in the market but any type of investment decision you have to make on your own how based on what you can afford okay and, and here quick uh, the question where can you attain a hardware wallet um go on to uh, Google and type in Ledger or Trezor. I have with the the, the video, the workshop for um, that we did in, in October, I have put this information in there. So go back to that email that you received from me, where I made a list of YouTubers, I made a list of articles, I made a list of where you can get all of these things, and um, I'll continue doing this in the energy reports. All right, but um, and you can just just type in Google hardware uh, a crypto wallet and you'll see Ledger and Trezor and then just click on it and order it. You can order it on Amazon. I got mine on Amazon. Go to Amazon, type in Trezor or Ledger and you'll see them there and you buy them and they send them to you. Another question here, where are reliable websites to buy Bitcoin? I've already mentioned this. Coinbase is one that I recommend. It's a, it's a wallet, so first you get your account there and then you buy it there, okay? That's a, a reliable source. Um, there are other wallets uh, uh, such as Bitwalla, um, uh, Bitstamp. Um, I mean, there's so many out there. Go get a wallet and then buy your Bitcoin from your wallet. Do not go to these websites that say, buy Bitcoin fast. You know, no, not that they're all scams, but I don't know. There's just too many and there's too much jungle fever out there, okay? So, you know, do the conservative thing, all right? And, and, and take it slow. The best practices and the behavior in the cryptocurrency market is to be energetically centered and consolidated. Do not get swept away by this hype. There is a hype there, and that is why it's uh, uh, so irrational. All right, and if you don't, um, you know, want to 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 inform yourself, I, I would even understand this. You know, like how I say, stay away from daily news because it, it wraps you up in the hype, and the hype is a distraction energetically that uncenters you, that makes you do bad choices that makes you do low vibratory decisions okay so stay away from the hype and just know what you resonate with if you resonate with uh, the idea of, of, of the crypto world you know then go with the most um, conservative thing that you can do which is get a wallet get some Bitcoin buy yourself a hardware wallet and store it there and uh, you don't you won't need to to search for uh, crypto news because you're going to get swamped with it next year you're going to be you know you, you can't stay away from that information it's going to be all over the news can you buy any altcoin with your wallet somebody asks you no you can't most wallets only offer you to buy currencies such as bitcoin bitcoin cash Litecoin, Ethereum, Ethereum, and maybe Dash. You have to go onto an exchange, a trading platform, uh, such as, and <coughs> Cheryl has a, a, a part to share here. <coughs> Sorry. 
Ether Delta, uh, Bitfinex, Bittrex. Uh, you know, remember I showed you on uh, CoinMarketCap.com um, how to to find those uh, trading platforms. Uh, it doesn't cost anything to to sign up for them and to trade anything. But again, remember not to leave your your uh, uh, cryptocurrencies that you bought on the trading platform. You have to move it to your wallet and then um, move it to your hardware wallet. And the other thing to know is that it's not just a click of a mouse. All of those transactions have a, a, a code thing that has to run through the blockchain. So you don't just click send. You have to put a physical address and move it step by step by step by step. It's not just a click of a mouse. No, it, 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 you need to take some time for that. If you, are, if you want to make trades, you got to prepare <laughs> mentally, emotionally, energetically, and you have to have an hour or two. Or you know? 12, like me. <laughs> yeah. Because so, I'm not that savvy. <laughs> it, you can do it, but it's still a jungle. And the software, guys, is at such a birthing state. It's terrible. It's terrible. Just the last couple of days, I've been, I can't wait for some of these crypto companies that are coming out with with trading wallets and all that, where it's easy and all in one step, you know, simple, to come out with their products. This will all happen in, within the next six months. Okay, by oh. July, it's all gonna be easier. Right now, it's jungle. But it will come, all right? And I'll keep you updated. So we'll do these workshops here as we go, and you will have to go back to the previous recordings you know, to 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 uh, get the basic knowledge because I'm, I can't repeat this every time. See, we're, we're at the two hour mark, oh, two and a half hours already, and we haven't even covered the practical part. So the future is clear, okay? And the market is driven by, at this very moment, a handful, a handful of kids, software coders, and some visionaries. We have not even entered the early adopting stage, which is the first 5%. We're, any, we're anywhere from like one to 2% market adoption. Pioneers, visionaries, okay? So is it too late to invest? No, <laughs> nowhere near. You are informed right now, okay? And that will give you the edge for the next two years minimum. And then things are gonna become more uh, uh, adaptable, they become a little easier, you know, and then and all the banks will, gonna, will jump in, all the governments will jump in, you know, um, they're probably gonna come out with some world uh, currency, security and all that. You know, it's gonna go all mainstream you know, in, in a few years down the road, okay? But as of right now, you at the birthing stage. And it's driven by the, the fear of the collapse of the financial system, which is imminent. But it's not gonna happen as we, you know, uh, predicted this maybe 15, 20 years ago, myself included. Um, it's gonna happen through digital currencies taking over the security market, meaning that people are gonna move their money value from their currencies, from their fiat currencies into the digital market. And that is huge. So you don't need to worry about, you know, this just being a bubble. Anybody who says a Bitcoin or cryptocurrencies are a bubble is ignorant or is trying to drive the market down so that they can buy in cheap. This is what you're gonna see here happening the next weeks. Big investment companies and banks telling you that this is all a bubble and that you should get out so that the value gets driven down to a point where they can get a cheap in with the huge funds. Do not listen to anyone who says this is a bubble. This is not a bubble. This is a whole new technology. 
something else I wanted to say, but I forgot this now. So the how-tos, okay. Um, you know, it's two and a half hours and I can't really expect anyone to, 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 to waste their time uh, any longer. So I think what I should do is uh, do a, a second part here and, and literally on my screen, guide you through doing this. I'm only gonna show you the very uh, 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 beginning of, of where to start, okay? Um, here on my own browser. When I prepared for this uh, webinar, I, I quickly realized that actually what this is supposed to be is the what not to do. Okay, so today we could only cover really the, the basic security aspect and the basic outlook. You're going to have to um, either wait uh, uh, for getting a lot of more um, uh, practical advice as we go or um, do your own research. But I want to walk you through what it's like when you go on to Coinbase, one of those software wallets that I recommended to you, and what the steps are to open up a Bitcoin wallet and to buy your first Bitcoin. First thing you're gonna have to do is obviously to sign up. And if you click on that, it's gonna ask you for your first name, email, and to choose a password. Uh, there'll be a lot of uh, extra uh, uh, verifications in the process and I, I want you to know um, just so you've heard this before there is something that they call two-factor authentication and you have to have two-factor authentication with anything related to cryptos meaning that they're going to send you a security code to your phone and you have to type in the phone before you can uh, type in the code before you can make any transaction do that anything crypto related always click on enable two-factor authentication just so you've heard this before so here you type in your name and do this okay and then uh, it's going to look like this i'm going to show you my account they, what they're doing now here i'm signing in two-step verification that's the what i just mentioned so they just send me a code to my phone i'm typing this in just so I can log into my account. Why is this important? Oops. So that nobody can, else can log in. Hang on. This is what Coinbase looks like once you have an account. First it shows you just uh, here the course uh, of, uh, at this very moment, I'm, I'm logged into Litecoin, Bitcoin. This is my portfolio, as I call it, basically my accounts that I have. And you see there's not a lot of money here because I don't store my, 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 my cryptocurrencies here, okay? So um, they offer you uh, four different kinds of accounts, uh, uh, Coinbase does, Bitcoin, Litecoin, Ethereum, or you can also keep your US dollar funds there which is not a bad idea, so you can switch around more easily and quicker. And then here on the right side, you'll see transactions that you have made. But um, uh, when you're in the sign-up process, you know, you'll get to this place and then uh, you have to do a few steps before you can actually begin to trade. And that is, um, oops, settings. You have to connect your Bitcoin wallet with your bank account, okay? So you have to, uh, uh, give them the basic data about yourself and um, uh, they want a uh, copy of your driver's license that shows where you live and uh, some other sites also want a selfie from you this is legit you have to do this this is like a bank account okay and you want to link your bank account to it so that you can use your debit card all right, if you don't do this, you can only buy $250 worth of Bitcoin when you live in, uh, if you live in the United States or Canada. And if you uh, uh, link your bank accounts to it and verify your bank accounts, uh, then uh, you, you have a higher limit, okay? Um, I strongly recommend you to do this. There's nothing you need to be worried about. It's not more or less safe than just dealing with PayPal. Um, it t this takes a few days. So be prepared, you know, um, uh, to, to do this in steps. You can't do this all at once. 
okay so you sign in sign up for your bitcoin account for your bitcoin wallet you verify your identification and you link your bank account to it all that takes a minimum of 24 hours all right and then you're ready to buy something now you will be able to buy Bitcoin, uh, even if you live in the United States, with your debit card directly, um, uh, only $250 and uh, $500 dollars in most uh, other places or $1,000. So there, you'll have a limit. But once you link your bank account to it, uh, then uh, you will only have the limit of whatever your bank gives you, like say your credit card or your debit card. All right. And that's it. And you can buy Bitcoin right away you you buy it and then you'll see it here okay so let's say i just sent a transaction i wanted to buy 250 dollars worth of bitcoin at this moment it's 0 0.0163 bitcoin you'll find this here in your account and then you can transfer this back into us dollars if you want or send it to your bank account if you need it again I mean, obviously, that wouldn't be smart at the moment because you're buying it to invest into Bitcoin and to just leave it there, okay? And once uh, the transaction takes a little bit, so once that is done, you remove it to your, um, uh, uh, you move it to your uh, Trezor, which is what I did here. So I bought some Litecoin, so I sent Bitcoin to buy Litecoin, received Litecoin, and uh, then I moved it to my, I paid something, I bought something with Litecoin. And then um, I also sent it, I sent it to my Trezor. Does this help you guys to lose a little bit of the fear involved? Okay. And then you have, of course, these different tabs when you want to buy something. Here, let's say you want to buy more Bitcoin or you want to buy Ethereum, you know, you go uh, and you can pick your, your, your payment method and then, you know, you just say, okay, I want to buy Bitcoin for like $100, oops, $100, it converts it into the Bitcoin value and then buy Bitcoin instantly, click, okay? You can sell Bitcoin here. This is the case that Deb brought up if you want to have this in, in, in US dollar again because you, you need the money. Then you take your, your Bitcoin that you have and um, you know and you say I need I need a hundred dollars, you know, so converts it into the Bitcoin value and then you say sell Bitcoin instantly and you will have ninety-seven dollars in your US dollar wallet and which you then can send to your bank account and all this takes about two days okay so at least i wanted to get this in and and that's uh, uh that's it for the uh, the practical tips here um uh, i've, I've uh, uh, summarized this here for you again um the steps Get a software wallet, get a hardware wallet, prepare your bank connection, you know, do the, the, uh, the authorization. If you don't live in the United States and Canada, apply for a crypto card, you know, um, 10X um, and Bitvala um, are companies where you can do this. There's more, but those I know work and they're good. Um, if you have a business, you know, look at uh, what you need to do to accept bitcoin as a merchant because that can be an additional investment uh, pool for you you know where you uh, sell your products or your services for crypt uh, cryptocurrencies and they stack up there you know and and you can just have them sent to your bitcoin wallet stay in the loop educate yourself you know my energy updates will take care of some of that develop a strategy you know like how fast of a horse do you want to Right on, you know, as, as uh, Cheryl I said this earlier, um, consider mining pools. Uh, you know, not necessarily, I do not recommend people uh, to mine at this point. It has become way too expensive unless you live in those countries such as Iceland. 
where the, the cost of energy is extremely cheap, but um, an extremely slow and conservative course is uh, uh, to become part of a mining pool, which means um, they offer you to buy in, in shares on, on, on mining facilities where you just sort of generate um, Bitcoin. So you're not buying Bitcoins, you're actually generating Bitcoins and they get automatically transferred to your Bitcoin wallet. That is something I recommend to those of you who do not want to really get into the hype, who do not want to, um, uh, you know, uh, go through all the ups and downs. And at, as of right now, I am recommending Plan C. That is a very conservative uh, a mining pool that um, has a, that makes the money through 60% uh, mining, 20% trading, and 20% ICOs for you. So it's like an investment club, if you will. And there's a referral uh, uh, system underneath that. So if you refer this to others, you can also uh, make some extra money. But it's not based on that. It's based on the actual mining. And just so you guys know, I'm actually negotiating with them right now because I was offered a mining facility in Iceland. Uh, to increase their mining capacity and then my last tip for you is um, stay calm stay calm and hodl hodling hodl is not a typo but it you know it, it, it is a beautiful uh, uh, play with with words it's actually a typo uh, one uh, the story behind this is like a, some some drunk uh, software coder uh, said all I'm gonna do is Hodl right now, and what he actually meant to type is hold. Okay, hold as in just keep what he has and not do any moves, you know. And and this has become uh, sort of the new word in the crypto world for staying calm and holding, holding, not doing anything, not moving, holding, uh, other than maybe stacking up. Okay, any free. Yeah load questions this is not a question i just want to say to you yona you have been successful in taking somebody like me who had no knowledge of this situation back a few months ago of this opportunity and who had lots of internal stuff to overcome to even consider it to getting me to the brink where i feel like between my common sense and my ability to like you know, generate a little courage and a little patience and your advice and your information have like moved me along to where I feel like I can take some action now for myself and take some responsibility for my financial situation in a way that I could not imagine, have imagined doing prior to now. That's huge. And I want to acknowledge Cheryl because <laughs> I know I'll be texting her or, or emailing her in the very near future going, Yes, Cheryl, hold my hand. I'm right there with you. <laughs> so thank you. I can you. teach you some new swear words, Deb. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Deb. You know, this is a really my objective here, just like is it, uh, as it is with uh, uh, the energy work, to empower you guys, okay? I, I, you know, I'm not an expert. I'm an expert in energies, but not in, in cryptocurrencies, but I can see this very clearly. Right, and if, if this is all I did here with these workshops, you know, then that's a success for me. Thank you for your appreciation. I, and I second that too, Yona. And just, just so you know, Deb, I have been sitting here while we've been on the thing trying to figure out how to transfer money or some currency onto my uh, ledger wallet for the last hour, uh, trying over and over again. And I've done it a few times before, so every time I do it, it's like doing it all over again. Mm -hmm. And I would love to tell you that this is the most beautiful experience in the world, but it doesn't, and it pisses me off every time. Yes, but you guys are uh, at the top of something here. For the exactly. first time in life, maybe. You know, and uh, it just so you know, I've had a lot of people uh, since the beginning of the year who sent me emails who said oh my god I made so much money how can I repay you because I'm not charging for anything right the only place where I actually come in as a person you know where I benefit from something is if you 
become uh, uh, if you sign up for the the, the ultra conservative mining pool there's a referral percentage that I get so those of you who, who are thinking along those terms you know don't send me any money or nothing you know just sign up for yourself you know and I'll you know get a small percentage of the gain that you make okay this is this is my reward but other than that this is all about empowerment okay on all levels and I said this in the beginning for those of you who are listening to the recording unfortunately the first what half hour or hour almost get cut off but somebody told me that they have recorded it um, please uh, yeah, send me the recording if you can um, yes uh, you know it, I said this in the beginning you cannot exclude your financial abundance from your journey this has a lot to do and, and guys the energy coaching that I do with with uh, hundreds of people here every month this is all about you know this conflict between uh, a job and money and all that it is ignorant to assume that money has nothing to do with spirituality it has a lot to do with that because if you get into this place where you can own your own house where you can build you know the, your own space and don't have to make these compromises that you know you know are, uh, are toxic for your energy then you are in a whole different place on your journey You've got to understand that money is energy. It's just energy, but it is energy too, okay? And so everything that you do needs to have a good energy balance. And the, the cryptocurrencies here enable us to participate in that sort of global shift of wealth because that's all that is. There's a shift of wealth happening at this very moment and we can benefit from this without hurting anybody you know without having to take it away from anybody okay so thank you guys for coming for your patience and um uh the, oh there's one uh, the other question unless you guys have more questions but i gotta go now um somebody's asking about the internet of things the internet of things just as a keyword here uh, is something that you may want to uh, Google. It's a movement. Um, and there are some aspects to that that I don't necessarily uh, see without criticism. So uh, use your own discernment. Um, you know, um, with everything here, like I said, uh, the big movers are going to come in and there's going to be a lot of centralized applications within the bigger decentralized environment okay so all the banks are going to have their own crypto wallets and all that you're going to see all that coming okay but they're not decentralized they're not open source so use your discernment here and who knows maybe in a year from now we have a huge crypto work group you know where we meet once a month once a week or once a month or whatever and discuss those things you know but as for right now you know, my emphasis is, of course, on energy work and helping you guys through your personal transformation. But money is one aspect of that. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for coming and thank you for listening and thank you for your appreciation. Okay, guys. Have a wonderful rest of your Sunday. Bye-bye.